Hi, I'm Emily and I'm a level one chef. I'm Julie and I'm a level two chef. I'm Adriana and I've been a chef for 10 years. Uh, the last time I cooked steak was probably just a couple weeks ago. I make steak once a month. I would make it once a day if I could, but health. I came out with this recipe because I lived in France and I wanted to combine my love for cooking meat and a little bit of the experience that I had in France. So for my steak today, I have selected a flank steak. It's available in most grocery stores uh, and it's pretty cooked to quick. <laughs> This is a beautiful sirloin steak. We call it a New York strip steak. A lot of people like to cook with the bone. I do not. The bone releases so much flavor and you can tell the difference by far. Today I'm gonna to be preparing for you a bone-in, dry-aged ribeye steak. You wanna find a piece of beef that is beautifully marbled. You've got a lot of veins of fat running through the beef. And that's where the flavor is. This is probably about an inch thick. One and a half inch steak. You can really get in there with a sear. Cook the perfect, perfect medium rare or rare steak. It's a little different from your average steak because it's a little bit thinner usually. It's not quite as thick a steak cut. It can be a little tough, but you just sort of do cooking things to work your way around that. First things first, we're gonna season our meat. I like Montreal steak spice, which you can just buy in the grocery store. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna mix uh, coriander and black peppercorns and some other stuff, but first I have to smush up the coriander and peppercorns. So I'm just gonna use a pan. This is called braai seasoning. I'm gonna mix a little bit of the salt and the braai together to create my rub. We're gonna take a paper towel and blot it. I just don't want any like blood or water or juices. So I'm gonna make for you one of my favorite marinades. This is Worcester sauce, tamari, mushroom powder, yuzu, anchovy paste, roasted garlic. Last but not least, a shallot. So I'm just going to take these and put them in my little bowl. And then I'm just gonna add some salt, dried garlic, and red pepper flakes. What I'm gonna do next is paint my beef with a little olive oil just for flavor. And it also will help the rub adhere. You see I'm being very gentle because I respect the beef. So now I'm just gonna put some of this rub on each side of my steak and you just wanna press it in a bit. So that it all doesn't come tumbling off when you begin to sear. Go heavy on the salt. This is where we're gonna put our steak and our beautiful marinade. And then back in seal it. Okay, so this is the final result. All right, so we've got the rub on the steak now and we're just gonna give it a few minutes to rest and let the seasonings meld in for minimum five minutes. 24 hours in the fridge. And in the meantime, we're gonna make our steak sauce. Purists say a beautiful piece of meat should never be ruined by sauce. But sometimes I like to get fancy schmancy. I'm going to cream together blue cheese and butter. Look how nice and easy that is. So, we're gonna make a log. Have a piece of cling wrap here. And then you see, you roll that up. That, my friends, is a blue cheese butter log. So, ingredient number one, ketchup. And some other stuff, too. So, uh, vinegar. Pepper, salt, little bit of hot sauce. This is sugar. We're gonna do Worcestershire sauce. Some mild flavored molasses. And then I'm just gonna combine these. I'm just mixing them together. All right, and this is our steak sauce. Okay, so now we're gonna make our delicious Vernet sauce. So what we need is equal parts of vinegar and wine, two shallots that we're gonna cut very roughly. These are some peppercorns, the peel of any citrus that you like. I love Meyer lemons. Meyer lemons are more aromatic. So now we're gonna bring this sauce to a boil and then we're gonna reduce it down halfway. We have wine and we want to evaporate the alcohol and we wanna concentrate all the flavors. Perfect. This will take about five to six minutes to cool down and then it will be ready to use it for our Vernet sauce. I'm gonna cut my mayor lemon and some herbs that I have here. So I'm gonna do basil, mint, and thyme. We're gonna start separating four eggs, 
just the yolk. That's gonna be the base of our sauce. It's gonna emulsify with the butter and the pickling liquid that we did before. I previously melt down the butter and cool it down because if you don't cool it down and it's hot while you incorporate it to your eggs, your sauce is gonna separate. And you're gonna start seeing how the sauce starts getting, you know, thick and rich and that's it. See, it's creamy, but it's not super thick. And that's what we're looking for. The last ingredients that I like to add are the herbs because we want the herbs to still be very fresh and the mushroom powder. And that's it. Just mix in. I love it. Exactly what I was looking for. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna be doing is cooking the steak. So I'm using a nonstick pan. Not everyone has a cast iron skillet, okay? You see before you the holy grail, a cast iron pan. I've been heating this up in the oven with just a slick of neutral high smoke point oil. We're gonna cook it in our sous vide machine. What sous vide machine does is that keeps the temperature the same for a long period of time. It's 130 Fahrenheit, so we're gonna leave the steak here for an hour and a half, and then we'll come back to it when he's ready. So you just wanna wait for the pan to actually be hot. I just, I have a tendency to like put it on and then be like, okay, is it hot yet? Is it hot yet? So I'm gonna try and be patient. An hour and a half later, our steak gets ready to go. We're gonna take it out of the water. It's very important to dry it very well because if not, you're not gonna get that perfect searing. All right, we're going. Yeah, you got a little bit of a sizzle there. I'm gonna sear this on each side for about four minutes. Three minutes. Three to four minutes till it gets very, very, very crusty. And now we wait. Here's the hardest thing about the searing method. Patience. I know you're not here, but it smells so good. Like brown butter, garlic, that marinade that we previously made, the fat from the meat. So good, so good. All right, I think we're about ready to go flip. Ooh, hello, there we go. And we're flipping. Gotta hold your handle. This pan is so hot. All right, look at, guys, can I just tell you what perfection is? This is so perfect, look at this. And then I add some butter. butter. I know, it's a lot of butter, but that's where the flavor is. It's a great way to get like a nice, juicy, tasty, buttery steak. And then thyme, a little bit more flavor, and garlic. And now we're gonna close this. Ooh, with the butter. This is the beauty of a cast iron pan. It conducts heat so beautifully and it holds heat. So I think that this is probably around as much as I wanna cook it. I like my beef pretty rare to medium rare and I think it's been on for about eight minutes, which is with this thickness of steak as much as you really wanna do. The sous vide machine cooked the steak to the perfect medium rare. So what we're doing here right now is just searing the meat because you don't wanna overcook it. This old girl is ready to roll. We're good, we have a nice sear, a nice crust. We're gonna turn this off. Now we go into a super hot oven for let's say eight minutes. See you in a bit. So this meat is ready to go and we're gonna put it in our cooling rack and then we're gonna let it rest for about two to three minutes. All right, there we go. Okay, that's as good as it's gonna get. Off, go away. <laughs> no, I turned it on again. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, you gotta rest it because if you slice it right away after cooking, um, all the juices are gonna come out and you want the juices to not come out. So while this is resting, I'm gonna take my blue cheese butter, which I've had in the refrigerator. We're just gonna slice, look at that. Is that nice or what? We've got that sliced up and now it's time to slice it and plate it. So the grain was this way, and so we're just gonna slice it this way. I like to cut against the grain because it's a little more flavorful and tender. If you cut it the other way, the steak is gonna be tough, and you don't want that. I mean, come on. Awesome, so some of the juice is coming out because it, it may have wanted a little longer to rest, but that's okay. I'm level one, all right. <laughs> Okay, uh, oh yeah, it is, it's bleeding pretty heavily. We're gonna plate it right here. Okay, here we go. And then you take your beautiful butter and you kind of put it between 
your steak slices. I'm just gonna add a little steak sauce on the side. I'm just gonna put it in a little bowl, like a dipping sauce kind of thing almost. Put a little parsley. On top of our steak, just a little bit. And now it's ready to serve. Here's my steak. Friends, this is my steak. This is my steak. All right, so it's time to eat. Mmm. Mmm. This is good steak. So yeah, I'd say that turned out great. I mean, mm. it tastes really good. I mean, it's like steak levels of chewy, but not like, wow, chewy. Delicious. I'm gonna take another bite, just to make sure it's good, you know? Mmm. Very good. Mm. All three of our chefs chose different cuts of beef, seasoning, and sauces to make their steaks. Emily used a flank steak, which tends to be a tougher cut of beef because it has more connective tissue and less fat. It's a hind quarter cut and is often used in making commercial ground beef. Julie used a strip steak, which is a more tender cut of beef and marbled with more fat than the flank steak. Fat is flavor. The strip is also from the hind quarter, from the muscle called the longissimus lumborum. It's more tender because it's not used for movement of the steer. Meat tenderness is inversely related to the amount of work the muscle does while the steer is alive. Adriana used a bone-in ribeye steak, which comes from the rib section of the animal and is full of flavor and fat. Her ribeye was dry-aged. Dry-aging is a slow chemical process in which enzymes and microorganisms make the meat more tender and flavorful by converting proteins into savory amino acids, glycogen into sweeter glucose, and fats into aromatic fatty acids. And that releases a lot of flavor. It happens by hanging dry, unwrapped, large cuts of beef at a low temperature over a month or so. Hanging the meat also helps to stretch the muscle filaments and prevents them from bonding, which reduces toughness in meat. Cooking meat on the bone also adds another layer of flavor. It helps retain moisture and reduce shrinkage in meat because the bones hold the meat in place. Bones heat more slowly than meat, so overall, cooking is slower and more gentle on the proteins in meat. Emily used a dry spice rub, which works well on a tougher and thinner cut of meat like the flank steak. Or at least that's what I've always heard, I don't know. The acidic spices and salt in her spice rub disrupt and weaken muscle fibers and increase their ability to retain moisture. She also used some spicy hot ingredients. Like a uh, red pepper flakes? I couldn't remember the word. That'll taste good, but it'll mask some of the beefy flavor you get from just a salt-based rub. Julie used a South African bry spice mix prior to cooking. This is a special dry, salt-based seasoning, which brings out the flavor of meat. So, of course I brought a lot of it back home with me. Salt can suppress bitter flavors in meat, which come from amino acids like arginine and tryptophan, or compounds like anserine or carnosine, adding to a more pleasant sensory experience. Adriana used a wet marinade that included rich ingredients that are high in glutamate, which enhances the meaty umami flavor. Glutamate is an amino acid naturally occurring in meat and fish, like the anchovies she included, and is in some plant-based foods like mushrooms and tamari sauce. She also marinated her ribeye for several hours in a vacuum-sealed pouch, so it had more time for the flavors to develop. Marinades add flavor to the surface of meat, and the longer the marinade time, the more flavor development with salty marinades. Be careful though. If you have acidic ingredients like vinegar, you may get some sour notes if you marinate the meat too long. Fluids released by the breakdown of muscle fibers during cooking stimulate and intensify flavors and aromas in meat. There's maximum fluid release when your steak is rare to medium rare, which is the temperature all three of our chefs went for. I'm a little off with the... They don't need to know that. If you continue to cook the meat, it'll shrink in size because fluids are no longer present and you'll end up with a tough, dry steak that may taste a bit like liver. Emily added oil to her non-stick pan. While adding oil increases the temperature at which the meat will be seared, it's not necessary in this case. Julie brushed her steak with oil before adding it to the heated cast iron. Adding oil prevents the meat from sticking to the skillet and adds some richness to the steak. Julie finished her steak in a hot oven, a dry heating method. 
which works well for cuts of meat like New York Strip that have a higher fat content. The meat stays moist and juicy while it's in the oven. Adriana used a technique called sous vide. Her ribeye was vacuum sealed in a bag that was placed in a water bath and held at a constant temperature. You can do this for several hours and the meat will not exceed the temperature of the water. Just before serving, Adriana took the meat out of the pouch and seared it. Searing meat doesn't seal in juices as most people think, but it does increase Maillard browning, imparting rich roasted flavors and colors unique to beef. Sous vide is a reliable and consistent way to cook steak, but you do need special equipment. Emily made a quick steak sauce with some acidic components like ketchup, vinegar, and molasses, which add sweetness and tang, but also help to tenderize her flank steak by breaking down connective tissues. Julie added additional fat in the form of butter combined with blue cheese at the end. This gives an earthy, piquant, and slightly tangy taste and smooth texture to her New York strip steak. The blue cheese is a sharp complementary flavor to the mild and succulent strip steak. Blue cheese butter never hurt a thing. Adriana finished her ribeye with garlic, butter, and thyme as a base. She also added flavorful Bernays sauce, incorporating Meyer lemons, which are sweeter than regular lemons, and mushroom powder to enhance the umami richness of the sauce. Bernays is a complex sauce based on an emulsion. An emulsion is when two liquids that don't normally want to form a mixture do. With Bernays sauce, phospholipids and lecithin in egg yolks emulsify the water-soluble flavoring components into a rich, velvety topping for your steak. There's lots of different ways to cook and season steak. Next time you're in the mood for a great steak, I hope you'll use some of these tips.